some of the signs and symptoms that might occur in a mid-shaft femur fracture may include pain in the middle of the thigh, swelling over the thigh, bruising in that area, deformity or shortening of the thigh, an inability to weight bear, a high force mechanism of injury, or in someone who's frail or has a disability, such as osteoporosis, we may see a low force mechanism of injury. Uh, crepitus, distal neurovascular deficits, or hemodynamic instability. We also always want to be alert of the presence of multiple injuries if there's been a high force mechanism of injury. Once we've recognized a mid-shaft femur fracture, what's some of the treatment that we're able to do? In the pre-hospital care of a femoral shaft fracture, at both the basic and advanced life support level, it's centered around the use of immobilization of the limb. The main goal of splinting is to prevent further injury and reduce pain. So this can be achieved by using either a simple splint or a traction splint. A traction splint is something that applies a strap over the pelvis or hip, which is an anchor. It uses a rod to stabilize the leg and a mechanical device is attached to the ankle, which then applies traction with this rod beside the leg to realign the limb and minimize the risk of vascular and neurological complications. There are some real benefits in using a traction splint over a normal splint. So some studies have found that there was a significant reduction in pain when using a traction splint over a simple splint in a mid-shaft femur fracture. We've got a massive reduction in the risk of neurovascular damage and entrapment of nerves. Plus, it also reduces the severity of shock by reducing the amount of blood loss that we would get in a mid-shaft femur fracture. So you may wonder, how does a traction splint reduce the amount of blood loss in a mid-shaft femur fracture? So you can think of the thigh as a shape. It's the shape of an inverted cone normally. When the femur is fractured and the two bones get pulled together, the shape of this thigh changes to a more spherical shape, followed by then a cylindrical shape as bleeding within the thigh increases. So this is important because each one of these shapes has a different volume. In a cone, the volume is much smaller than both a sphere and a cylinder. So therefore, in a cone, there's less space for bleeding to occur. When we apply traction to the limb, it aims to pull the thigh back into its more anatomical position, being the cone shape, therefore less volume. So this minimizes the potential space for blood loss to occur. I'm going to look at the indications and contraindications for a traction splint now. So we're only going to be using a traction splint in a suspected or obvious isolated mid-shaft femur fracture. Can't use it for any other fracture. So some of the contraindications for using this traction splint will be an injury to the ankle or foot, a partial amputation with bone separation while there's only marginal tissue, tissue which is connecting the limb, a fracture or dislocation of the knee, fracture of the neck of femur, or fracture of the tibia or fibula. When deciding to apply a traction splint, appropriate analgesia needs to be administered to the patient. The traction splint itself has benefits as an analgesic once it's in place, However, the setup and application has the potential to be extremely painful for the patient. Some pre-hospital analgesia that could be included or be a combination of may include paracetamol, methoxyfluorine, morphine, fentanyl, or in extreme pain cases, ketamine. As we've already discussed, we know a mid-shaft fractured femur has the potential to cause hemorrhagic shock. In the pre-hospital environment, we want to treat this shock, and some of these methods may include traction splinting limb. As we've already mentioned, this is going to reduce the amount of bleeding that can occur within the thigh. We're going to administer oxygen to the patient. We want to maintain their body temperature. 
we can administer IV fluid. However, we're going to be very cautious with that and treat the patient with permissive hypotension. We may consider blood products if they're available. Plus, we may also consider TXA. This is going to reduce the risk of further bleeding occurring and is also proven to reduce the risk of mortality and trauma-related hemorrhage. There are many different types of traction splints, and they all work on the same principle of applying traction to the limb, but through different mechanisms to achieve traction. These vary vastly on the difficulty of applying the splint, which is particularly important when used in a pre-hospital environment. The two traction splints that will be compared in this training are the CT6 traction splint and the CT7 traction splint. Some other traction splints that are not discussed here include the Donway, a Slishman's, or a KTD.